Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is going to be one of the 2020 Project Orchid updates. So it'll be update one in that set. And um, <laughs> I don't believe it. Kit's just come on. Duh. Um, yeah, so it'll be update one and this will be part three, um, those in the Catlia Alliance. So we'll get those done today. I'm going to try and get this filming done before I do anything else in the grow room. Um, this is not the normal way I start the day. Just opened the door to come out here. We're heading up to 22 degrees. The sun hasn't come round yet. I'm still in total shade and it's reading 99% humidity, which is wrong. <laughs> I think I actually got some water on that yesterday. Um, however, that's a more accurate reading, I would say. Around 80% uh, humidity at nearly 22 degrees. Um, that's not how I normally start the day out here. Um, we've got two, two more days of this, so today and Thursday. Um, Thursday will be question time as normal. I have enough. <laughs> Got enough questions for a question time from one <laughs> comment. But before I get on to this, I'd just like to show you this. A while ago, I was <laughs> cussing basically on the grounds that I'd knocked my new growth off of my Catlia, dooming it for another year to wait. Oh, yeah? So there's the broken leaves and we've got buds coming out. So it's going to bloom anyway, despite losing the leaves. <laughs> so not all is not lost. <laughs> um, chances are that the embryo buds had already formed in that growth and they, they've just progressed irrespective of the fact that that growth lost its leaves. But effectively that's a year's worth of growth actually lost because there's now two leaves missing from the plant. But it's going to bloom anyway. That's not bad. I hope that's not one of the project orchids. <laughs> anyway, I shall get on and get this filmed because it takes quite a lot of time to put the video together with all the little bits and pieces I have to do. And that's how it will be done in bits and pieces. So uh, let's get going. Right, first one on the list is this uh, Lelonia. Um, it was actually bought as a cross between a Lelia and a Brautonia. Um, but looking at the two elements that make it up, I uh, did a bit of work, and that particular cross has got a proper name, which is what I'm going to use from now on. Um, now this one was bought at the Welsh Orchid Show last September, so it's a relatively new plant, was mounted and promptly soaked. Um, didn't go downhill or anything, it just didn't move uphill, did nothing. <laughs> and it was still doing nothing around the time when we looked at it last, three months ago. Um, I was There were some hints of some new roots, but nothing much going on at all. So obviously what I was waiting for on this was growth, um, both in the root department and in the, um, you know, pseudobulb department, because it, it just sat there and did nothing. Um, leaves stayed a good colour and everything. That top left hand leaf was um, damaged when I got it, that's not me. Um, we do have a yellowing leaf on there, um, dead centre at the top, small one, uh, so that's a seedling leaf. That's going to go soon. But um, apart from that, it, it, it's, it's, it's doing okay, it's just not progressing. So the plan for this was to just try and get some new growths going along with some new roots. They normally go together but not always as we know on Catlias sometimes the bulbs get fully mature before the new roots come. I hope that's not the case in, in this one. I hope we do get some roots um, reasonably soon. It hasn't got a good root system. It's got enough just about to hang on. Well, that's about as good as it gets so uh, let's see how this one did. Okay, we start off with uh, at least one that's made really good progress. Yes, what can we do for you? Yes? Naughty cat. Come and say hello then. Come and say hello. Now, come on, you've got to go out. Come on, shoot, shoot. <laughs> yes, you. 
<laughs> Scruffy cat. Um, right, where was we? Uh, progress on this one. Good. Um, basically, we have. We were waiting for new routes. We've got them. Um, I wouldn't say that's a substantial root system, but it's grown a root system. So we've done well there, including one. I don't know where that one's heading off for. Um, some have gone up through the moss. Some have gone all over the plant, um, into the moss, so quite quite a bit of growth. As far as new growths are concerned, we've got this large one coming out to the left here. So that's one. And then coming round, we have one in the centre of the plant. That's two. And then we have another large one coming out of the centre of the plant that's actually two together, both heading out this way. And then we have another two coming out at the back. That's actually a lot of new growths for a Cattleya type. So two at the back, two in the centre, that's four. Another one in the centre, five, and another one round this side, six. We've got six new growths on there, with the potential for every single one of them to bloom. Uh, probably a staggered blooming. Um, the two in the centre are about the same as that one on the left and the other three are behind, so we could get a staggered blooming. But I suspect all, all six of those new growths will actually bloom. So progress on this one, substantial. Um, um, couldn't really be more pleased because after mounting it, it stalled. Um, did next to nothing, so it's really picked up. Um, and it's going to use this growing season to get those growths going and mature them and hopefully produce spikes on all of them. Good stuff. And the next one is the uh, what was <coughs> the notorious non-bloomer, which we got some blooms on. Now that's not a picture of the blooms, that's off the internet. Unfortunately the bloom of the picture of my blooms was in one of the areas that got lost with the laptop, so I've lost my own picture. So that's not actually what those blooms look like, they were paler in colour. But we got it to bloom on one of the two new growths. So uh, I was over the moon. I mean, when we were looking at it three months ago, we had two matured growths or maturing growths with two good sized sheaths on. So it had the potential to bloom, um, but it was like an unknown thing at that particular point. One of them bloomed, one of them didn't. The fact that it didn't then, it probably never will. But as far as I was concerned, that was a major progression. This had been a non-bloomer with no real explanation apart from, you know, coming from the southern hem hemisphere into the northern hemisphere and getting all its seasons mixed up, which was my only logical answer for it not blooming. Certainly big enough and healthy enough, that wasn't the problem. Um, certainly got enough light. You can usually tell the Lalias they get that yellow tinge to the bulbs when they're when they're doing well with the light. But anyway, we had some blooms, so uh, that was progress in that sense. And this is probably my um, it's probably my largest Cattleya actually Lalia. It's called Cattleya now, I suspect. Anyway, the Purpurata. Um, progress on this is on hold. But we did finally get it to bloom, and it's nice to see the progression. The actual sheath that bloomed has completely died off. The one that didn't bloom hasn't. No, I wouldn't hold out hope for that blooming in the future. It's not going to. It's just going to sit there like that, and it will eventually shrivel. Um, so obviously on this particular plant, I'm waiting for the new growths to start. But they haven't yet. I was having quite a long pause after blooming, which was half expected. Um, but new growths will come from this area eventually. But I don't see them yet. Well, that's the eye, I suspect, there. But anyway, we should get two new growths on this soon. It has two directions. Um, I have got a bit of a decision to make because it's not growing new roots at the moment but the next two growths, one of them at least, is going to go over the edge of the pot. I can't see getting away with this one going in the pot. This one might just about get some of its roots in the pot 
it's already got a colossal amount of roots outside the pot so at some point this is going to have to be dealt with and I'm I'm inclined to wait on the grounds that at some point when those new growths progress and I can't remember whether the roots come with the new growth or when the new growth is almost mature or even when it is mature I can't remember and having lost my notes I haven't got any details but at some point the new growths will produce new roots that's the time to deal with it whenever that is that's the time to deal with it because there will be root damage getting it out of a clay pot there is no doubt <laughs> so to get those roots replaced quickly would be good I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it but when this was potted up it was potted centrally which was pretty bad news really on my part we've got a whole area of pot round the back here with nothing in it now if this part of the plant was in there was in there we'd have that much at the front so we'd get another year's worth of growths in there without moving it so uh, we'll have to wait and see but um, yeah at least we had some blooms now so you know that, that's good <laughs> and we'll take it from there but at the moment it's just sitting doing nothing at all so we'll take it from there now the Avanagara apple blossom um, had buds uh, on the growth to the right hand side um, just, just coming out between the two leaves on the latest growth so at this point in time we had buds um, so looking forward to blooms I mean with a spike that size um, excuse all the chairs creaking this bit of the sound that goes with the photo I do in front of the computer so that I can watch the still and how long it is and judge when to stop rabbiting <laughs> soon <laughs> um, so we had buds um, and at this particular point sometime either before this point in time or between this point in time and the next clip you know as of today the rhizome got cut on here but I don't because I've lost my notes and everything I don't know when it was done but at this particular point in time we had one direction of growth and this plant only ever produced one new growth at a time which always bloomed and each spike seemed to progress a little bit and get an extra bloom or two so the spikes had larger numbers of blooms each time so the plant was progressing um, but at this point we were awaiting blooms um, and we got them so that was good well, this has never been one of my best looking plants <laughs> but it, from now on it has an opportunity to improve itself um, blooms have been and gone um, I had quite a nice blooming on the single lead, that's all it's ever done for me is a single um, point of growth. But for those of you who have been around a while, we did cut the rhizome on this and then completely forgot that it had been done. And I almost went to do it again and realised because the back part of the plant was actually moving around that it had already been done. So, uh, yeah, very good. Anyway, we, we've had our blooms, so those are gone now and what we've got is at that point a nice strong new growth coming out what we've also got let's see the scale or mealy bugs I will deal with them in a minute um, those have appeared quite suddenly I only watered that two days ago they certainly weren't there then it shows how quick things can get around and I think there's the little cluster so that's where they're coming from they've got in behind that there so that's their main body that's where they're coming out from um, so anyway we have our nice new growth coming out here but what we also have is we have got our shoot from the back part of the plant where we cut the rhizome so we now have two growths so that's good um, that will actually uh, push this on yeah, if you look down in there they've got down in there as well that's one of their favourite hidey holes on Catlias, apart from around the base, is getting in where the old spikes are. So uh, I will get on and deal with that. I think that's it's not what I'd call a severe outbreak, but you know, needs dealing with nonetheless. And that's the level of bugs that I've got. Um, 
you know, an individual plant with a few to deal with. And, and they can be dealt with in, you know, 30 seconds and the plant's done. So I don't need to start chucking sprays all over the place at the moment. <laughs> However, that may happen. So there we go. So progress on that one. We now have two growths. So hopefully we'll get two spikes next time round. They will be staggered because obviously the initial growth on the stronger part of the plant, the front lead, is quite a bit farther ahead than this little one. But at least we've got a second one now. So uh, something to work with. Good stuff. Yeah, these Orchid Society raffles have got a lot to answer for. But the simple answer is don't buy raffle tickets. Then you don't bring things home that you don't necessarily want or need. <coughs> but this was a raffle prize at the Wessex Christmas do, but it was actually put in the raffle by somebody I know very well, Milan, um, so it was one of his plants. So I was pleased to get that. And that's about the only time when I buy a reasonable number of raffle tickets is at the Christmas do, because it's that sort of function. And the raffle has some really good stuff in it at the Christmas do. The normal meetings I don't bother because there's an awful lot of tat. <laughs> and no, my luck, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd be the last one up to the table with what's left. <laughs> uh, so I don't normally bother. But yeah, I was quite pleased with this. It's a plant I know nothing about. Um, but it's, it's one that I'm deliberately not trying to find out about. I just want to see what it does. And at this particular point, it wasn't doing a lot at all. Um, I think it had grown a root or two. Um, there were some signs of life at the top of the plant, but not a lot. Um, it was mounted. That might not have been the best of ideas. It's a wait and see. So this was just a trial and error plant. Now this one, last time we looked at it, there were signs of new growth coming. Um, we have progression on this at uh, quite a reasonable rate now. Um, got a new growth starting here, new growth pushing on here, and there's another one starting around the back here, plus we've got some root growth. Um, so it, it's coming back into growth. Um, I don't know what to expect from this. Um, it's a new plant for me. Quite honestly, I'd never heard of it when I got it. Um, it came from Milan, but it was in fact a raffle prize, so it wasn't something I chose. But as it's deciding to grow, it's got to be worth keeping to see if I can get some of these new growths to bloom. That's got to be worth doing. So uh, I haven't got a clue where the blooms come from. <laughs> Probably out the top somewhere. <laughs> but we'll find out. I quite like having a plant around sometimes that I know nothing about. So it's just interesting to watch what it does. Um, some people might worry about, well, how, how do you know how to look after it? Well, there's only one way of looking after things in here, and that's the way I look after things in here. So it just has to fit in with the rest. You know, if it's a cooler grower, well, not a lot I can do about it. If it's a warmer grower, not a lot I can do about it. I can adjust light levels. <laughs> this is in a medium to high light at the moment. Uh, that'll do. <laughs> Could be wrong, but it'll do. It's growing. So we'll see what happens to it, see what we get, see if we get some blooms off of uh, some of this new growth. Interesting. And now we get on to, this has been a troubled plant. Initially it was troubled because some halfwit, no names mentioned, decided that instead of being in the Cattleya Alliance, it was in the Oncidium Alliance. So we potted it accordingly with small bark and moss and the roots got soggy and completely disintegrated. So this plant was borderline dead <coughs> at one point. Um, once I twigged that I just made a, an almighty mess up, <laughs> nearly said the other expression then, um, I potted it correctly, you know, for the type of plant it is. A nice airy, large bark mix. It went in a clay pot along with most of my cattleyas that aren't mounted. and. It recovered very well and quite quickly, but it's still not right. But, I mean, at one point I think I had three or four spikes on this plant and the others failed. And we've ended up with one spike at this particular point and one bud has already failed on that spike. There were four, now there's only three. 
So it's not right, this plant. It's not happy. It's not doing as well as it should be. And I really don't know why. But, for the first time in a very long time, we had some blooms to look forward to, providing these three didn't fall off like the other one did. So that was the sort of point of play. We'd had some new growths a while back, and we now got to the point of blooming, but aborted quite a few of the spikes. So not quite right, this plant. OK, a plant with a problem. Now, last time we looked at this, we had buds. Um, those progressed and bloomed quite nicely, because I hadn't seen those blooms for a very long time. And I'm a trifle worried at the moment that we may never see them again something wrong with this plant, there's something not right. Um, first of all, well, we can't really have stuff like that and ignore it. Um, the leaves are pale across the board um, on the older part of the plant. Um, now this isn't a low light plant, it's not like the higher light last year should have done it any harm, but it's a plant that has tried to grow for some time and it looked like it was succeeding. But then I had to take a rotten pseudo bulb off there. We have two severely browned pseudo bulbs here that I'm keeping a close eye on. They're rock hard, they're not rotting. They're okay, yeah? Um, sometimes you can do more harm trying to take something off than you can leaving it there. Oh, that's my phone. Right, where was I? <laughs> um, but, so, at the moment, it's trying to grow again. So we have a, a new growth coming out here. We did look at this plant not that long ago and identified some of this. New growth here, new growth here. So around this side of the plant, we've got three visible new growths. And oh, if we turn it right round the other way, we have... Another one here, that's quite a strong new growth coming out there. And there's one trying to come out down there, buried, buried in the bark. <laughs> um, so we have new growths. It is trying to grow. But there's an inherent problem. As I said, I don't, you know, when I look at leaves like this, we do have to worry. Now, with the discussions we've been having lately, what we have to do when we're thinking, have we got bug damage, yeah? Bug damage can leave marks, yes? But if we were getting involved with this um, uh, mesophyll cell collapse idea, if we're going to get involved with that, then the thing that is common for that, that isn't common with anything else, is that it starts in the middle of the leaf and works its way out to both surfaces. So in theory, if that's what this is, or it's involved with that, then the markings underneath will be identical. And they are. They're identical. They match exactly. So that started inside the leaf and came out in both directions. So we've got to try and solve this. Um, now, these marks on this leaf have been there some time. And this idea with the cell collapse uh, can happen over time. So you can get an event that triggered it, but the damage can take some considerable time before it shows, if you know what I mean, before it uh, uh, you know, actually identifies itself. And certain on, on some of the things I've read, it, it, you, know, you could be looking at six to eight weeks. Now, that's nearly two months. Yeah, and these marks have been here some time. So how, how 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 long have we had those there? So when it happened, could have been quite a long time ago. I have one event that I can remember where I was filming and turned the heater off. We were going through a very cold snap, and I forgot to switch the heater back on that night. And that night we went down to, I think it was eight degrees, and it would have been at that temperature for some considerable time. Now the effect on plants of a sudden cold drop like that is often totally dependent on how wet the plant is, whether it's been recently watered, whether it's holding water or not. Yeah? 
plants can take quite a lot of cold if they're dry. Well, you know, that's a reasonably well-known fact. Most people would know that. And you can push your luck. You can drop plants down below their recommended minimum for short spells if they're dry. So maybe we're having a knock-on effect from a period some time ago that's only showing on some plants that happen to be wetter than the others, perhaps. I'm guessing. <laughs> Clutching at straws. Anyway, progress on this one. It is trying to grow. Whether this is going to be successful or not, I don't know. So that's that one. And now we've got the little... Uh, <clears throat> well, it's, it, it, it's got a long name. This has actually been registered, but I can't pronounce the, the name that they've given it. It's ridiculous. Anyway, it's a very popular plant. The blooms on this, everybody seems to like. The combination of colours just work, and I'm really pleased that I've got it. Um, now, at this particular point in time, we'd had some fun with this plant because it pushed out some growths in a strange place but they matured at half the normal size and then went ahead and bloomed. But blooms didn't last long, so it, it did something strange. But at this point we had buds coming out of one of the full-sized mature growths, so we were expecting blooms to come. It hadn't long gone out of bloom. Um, it effectively had blooms on one of those strange little growths, on a mature growth and we're now getting another set of blooms on another mature growth all staggered and a reasonable amount of time apart um, but I'm pleased with this plant in as much as it's a nice compact cattleya or cattleya cross and um, it's not going to it's going to expand width ways it's going to expand outwards not upwards so it'll always stay a nice compact plant it's a bifoliate and it blooms effectively on every single growth it produces. It will be nice to get multiple new growths on this, um, but that's, that, that is quite possible because of those strange little tiny pseudo bulbs that came out the back of the plant. But at this point, we were looking forward to the blooms, and they are popular. So again, on the last one, buds have uh, come and gone. Um, we've had the blooms on this. In fact, we had three consecutive lots of blooms on this, staggered. Um, the last lot have finished now, there are no mature growths. So obviously the progression on this from now on is based on pushing up some new growths. And we do have, we have one there, nice strong growth coming out at that point. Um, I don't suspect there will be a second one, but there could be because both of those leads actually bloomed not long after each other. So there could be strength there to push out uh, another one. But we do have a second new growth that's really difficult to see because it's there. So it's right down at the base of this pseudo bulb here. Very tiny at the moment, literally only, I've only just noticed it. So we have two new growths and again they will probably end up being staggered and will bloom at different times. So, uh, yeah, so we have new growths. Um, this produces roots in a strange manner. Um, what happened here was we had a, an obscure growth. It pushed out a tiny growth that never matured properly, and yet it bloomed. The one behind it was a more normal sized growth and that's now pushing out the new growth down here. This one isn't. So there's a remote possibility there could be another new growth in that area too. But I doubt it. I suspect what we're going to do is progress with the two we've got and that's what we'll have. Um, and it does strange things with the roots because it grows group roots from older growths at sort of random points. <laughs> and it starts, old roots start to branch at random times. But the new growths themselves do actually produce a flush of new roots. And the roots get very tatty very quickly on this one. Um, but it replaces them very quickly as well. So they come and go. Um, some cattleya roots, you know, stay looking good for several years. Um, they do eventually get replaced on all cattleya types. The new roots progress with the new growths, and eventually the older ones get 
tired and tatty looking and to some extent look dead but don't guarantee they're dead just because they look it they can shoot out so uh, at repotting time be careful what you cut off <laughs> so that's that one um, lovely blooms on that that that's quite a favorite with the with the, with the viewing population as well that one not only the little story that goes with the uh, with the name <laughs> for those of you who haven't heard it I'll say it again uh, apparently in a nursery <laughs> in a nursery far far away because <laughs> they're all far far away aren't they <laughs> in the land that time forgot there was a guy going round looking for suitable candidates to produce some new hybrids so obviously he was looking at things in bloom going round the nursery and the boss was up the other end busy doing something else and he picked up a plant and said can I use this in a hybrid and the boss looked round and went why not so it was called Catlitonia why not that's as true as I'm riding this bike. <laughs> it's a nice story, whether it's true or not. But I can see some sense in it, how it happened, you know, because why would the hell would you choose the name Why Not unless somebody just said it to you? So it has a ring of truth about it. <laughs> so that's that one then. So there we go then, that's the uh, part three, the Catlia types. One more part to go in this set, which I'll do, that'll be next week now, I suspect. Um, and while I've been filming, which obviously I haven't filmed a huge amount of time in here, although there, there are gaps that you don't see, but we're now looking at that now. I need to get the kit on. So although the humidity's hanging in there, temperature's climbing, I've got no air movement, the fans aren't on. And yesterday, for the first time, I had both of the fans on the um, higher setting. And despite that heat and that constant sun and the length of the day, I think I got up to about 27, whereas the day before it was 28 point something or other. So just putting the fans on that extra stage knocks a degree off. And when you're getting near that, heading towards that 30 degree mark, knocking a degree or two off can be the world of difference between plants shutting down because they're super stressed and just not feeling very comfortable. <laughs> there is a difference between the two. So we'll get the, uh, get the kit on now and let this place settle in um, while I decide what I'm doing out here today because I've got some decisions to make based on previous videos so uh, I need to crack on with that. I'll let you know obviously in due course but um, today's Wednesday, tomorrow's Thursday which will be viewers question time. It should be quite a good session, there's some interesting ones and then we'll move on from there. So. Uh, See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.